This episode of Gulf Coastal Connections, we're delving into the fascinating world of Tabasco. We will embark on the Tabasco Factory Tour, uncovering the intricate process behind the crafting of this iconic condiment. Each stop along the way unfolds a spicy tale of the origins and craftsmanship of America's favorite hot sauce. Then we're off on a driving tour of Edward Avery McAhenney's beautiful jungle gardens, where we will reflect on McElhenney's life and legacy. In the end, we will have gained a deeper appreciation for the captivating blend of spice, history, and the lush beauty of Avery Island. Join me in this sensory exploration that blends the essence of Tabasco with the captivating beauty of its surroundings. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hello, I'm Eddie Parker. Tabasco, a globally recognized name synonymous with fiery flavor, transcends its row as a mere condiment by offering enthusiasts an immersive experience. Beyond being a kitchen staple, Tabasco invites curious minds to embark on a factory tour, unveiling the intricate process behind crafting this iconic hot sauce. Delving deeper into the brand's legacy, visitors can explore the expansive jungle gardens, a sprawling 170-acre botanical haven and bird sanctuary. Here, the journey becomes more than a culinary adventure. It transforms into a sensory exploration of nature and craftsmanship, weaving together the spicy tale of Tabasco's origin and the lush beauty of its surroundings. Since its inception in 1868, Tabasco sauce has been a fiery sensation, originating from the enchanting Avery Island, Louisiana, meticulously crafted by the McElhenney family. Embark on an exciting journey starting at the museum where the fascinating history of Tabasco sauce, Avery Island, and the McElhenney family comes to life. Here you will secure your reserved tickets or seize the chance to purchase them, setting the scene for an immersive experience. Enter in Tabasco's vibrant legacy through the Avery Island fan experience, which features a walking factory tour and a scenic drive through the 170-acre jungle gardens. It is here we will embark on our captivating journey through the origins of Tabasco sauce. Our narrative unfolds against the backdrop of Avery Island, a historic salt dome famously recognized as the birthplace of Tabasco. Located in Iberia Parish, Louisiana, Avery Island spans five kilometers in length and four kilometers in width, perched about three miles inland from Vermilion Bay, which gracefully connects to the Gulf of Mexico. Unveiling its rich history, archeologists have traced human presence on the island as far back as 2500 BC, with evidence of Native American life manifested in pottery shards and salt extraction techniques. First witnessed by Europeans in 1779, the island has gone by many names, including Il Petit Anz and Isla Curran, echoing its diverse historical tapestry. Edmund McElhenney, a visionary American entrepreneur born in Hagerstown, Maryland in 1815, left an indelible mark on culinary history as the founder of the McElhenney Company the pioneering force behind the mass production of Tabasco sauce. Making his way to New Orleans in the 1840s and navigating the complexities of the Louisiana baking system, McElhenney's life took a turn when he married Mary Eliza Avery in 1859, tying his destiny to that of the Avery family and their namesake, Avery Island. The aftermath of the American Civil War brought economic hardship, leading McElhenney to reside on Avery Island, where he cultivated a family garden, rumored to be the birthplace of his inventive Tabasco sauce between the years 1866 and 1868. With his first commercial pepper crop in 1868 and the inaugural bottles hitting the market in 1869, 
branded as Tabasco pepper sauce, McElhenney secured letters of patent in 1870, packaging his creation in iconic cork top two ounce bottles with diamond logo labels. Initially, Tabasco's reach extended along the Gulf Coast, but McElhenney's strategic partnerships, including one with E.C. Hazard & Company, propelled the sauce into larger markets like New York City, Philadelphia, and Boston by the early 1870s. In the wake of Edmund McElhaney's passing in 1890, his entrepreneurial legacy seamlessly transferred to the capable hands of his eldest son, John Avery McElhaney. A man of multifaceted talents, John not only expanded and modernized the family business, but also embarked on a daring adventure by joining Theodore Roosevelt's 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry Regiment, famously known as the Rough Riders. Despite ascending to the rank of sergeant with remarkable speed, John Avery McElhaney's valor on the battlefield earned him a lieutenant's commission, a testament to his gallantry in action during the Battle of San Juan Hill. Remarkably, he continued to serve with resilience enduring the challenges of measles and malaria. The story of John Avery McElhaney weaves together the threads of entrepreneurship and military courage, underscoring the dynamic spirit that defined the McElhaney family across realms of endeavor. Following John Avery McElhaney's departure, the reins of the company were skillfully taken up by his brother, Edward Avery McElhaney. An unconventional figure, Edward brought a unique blend of entrepreneurship and adventurous spirit to the forefront. Fresh from an ardent expedition with Frederick Cook in 1894, where he served as an ornithologist, Edward's journey took an unexpected turn when their ship, the Miranda, was wrecked off Greenland. Undeterred, he embarked on another Arctic expedition to Point Barrow, Alaska in 1897. From 1898 until his passing in 1949, Edward steered the company through expansion and modernization, leaving an enduring impact. Beyond the boardroom, Edward was not just a businessman, he was an avid explorer and conservationist. Establishing a private wildlife refuge around the family estate on Avery Island, he played a crucial role in preserving a substantial coastal marshland in Louisiana, transforming it into a bird refuge. Edward's commitment to conservation extended to jungle gardens, his personal wildlife haven, where he introduced a variety of exotic plants. His story unfolds as a captivating narrative of a self-taught naturalist who seamlessly blended the realms of business, exploration, and environmental stewardship. Embark on the second stop of the tour, the Greenhouse, a vibrant showcase of the botanical alchemy behind the Tabasco family of flavors. Witness the life cycle of peppers, from the delicate seedlings to full-grown plants, each playing a crucial role in crafting the renowned Tabasco sauce. At the heart of this botanical symphony is Capsicum frutescens, hailing from Mexico and aptly named after the Mexican state of Tabasco. These peppers undergo a stunning metamorphosis, transitioning from green to vibrant orange and finally ripening into a fiery red over approximately 80 days. Standing tall at 60 inches, the Tabasco plant boasts cream or light yellow flowers that evolve into upward-oriented fruits as the growing season unfolds. Originating in the warmth of the Mexican state of Tabasco, these peppers demand a toasty environment for germination, thriving between temperatures of 77 degrees and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Delve in the fascinating realm of spice, as Tabasco peppers score in between 30,000 units to 50,000 units on the Schofield scale reveal their heat levels. In comparison, an habanero ranges from 100,000 to 350,000 units on the same scale. We have now explored the nuanced world of pepper cultivation and heat intensity in this immersive journey through Tabasco's greenhouse peppers. 
We are now at stop three, where we're gonna delve into the fascinating world of Tabasco's barrel aging process at the Cooperage. Take a close look at the barrel warehouse. This is where the intricate pepper mash aging process unfolds. The freshly harvested peppers are now transformed into a fiery mash. On the very day of their picking, carefully placed in white oak barrels that once cradled the rich spirits of diverse distilleries. These barrels undergo a meticulous preparation with their interiors decharred to shed the top layer of wood, then torched and thoroughly cleaned, which ensures minimal traces of any lingering whiskey. Transported to the warehouses on Avery Island, these barrels now cradle the mash as it matures over the course of up to three years. Welcome to Stop 4, the heart of the transformation, the blending room. Finally, the aged mash is meticulously strained, bidding farewell to skins and seeds, resulting in a flavor profile that reflects the artistry of the pepper aging process. Committed to sustainability, the McElhenney Company transforms leftover pepper skins and seeds into a fiery byproduct, ingeniously repurposing it for various applications, ranging from candy to medicine. At this point, a dedicated McElhenney family member meticulously examines and taste tests every batch of pepper mash, ensuring a perfect blend of flavor and heat in their renowned products. Once it passes inspection, it embarks on a 28-day journey where salt, peppers, and vinegar orchestrate a metamorphosis, turning strained pepper juice into the iconic Tabasco sauce. Stirred with precision and care, this meticulous blending process unveils a harmonious symphony that defines the distinctive and timeless taste of Tabasco. Welcome to Stop 5, the Avery Island exhibit, where geology unfolds a captivating tale. Avery Island is sitting on top of a colossal dome of rock salt. Its origins trace back to the upwelling of ancient evaporated deposits beneath the Mississippi River Delta known as Salt Domes. This geologic marvel is part of a quintet of Salt Dome Islands that punctuate the flat expanse of the Louisiana Gulf Coast. The intricate dance of Salt Dome formation begins in restricted basins where the ebb of water surpasses its flow. Through a meticulous process of evaporation, salt precipitates and deposits, setting the stage for the birth of these domes. However, it's not a swift process. A sustained period of episodic flooding and evaporation is required. Over time though, the salt layer gets cloaked in sediment buried beneath an expanding overburden. The Gulf Coast boasts over 500 salt domes, originating from the Middle Jurassic Luan Salt, Avery Island, a testament to this geologic wonder stands among five closely spaced domes near New Iberia, Louisiana, with this salt mining history dating back to 1862, potentially making it the pioneering salt dome mined for salt in the United States. Stop 6 offers a captivating salt mining experience, granting a glimpse into the challenging labor below Avery Island that has been occurring since the Civil War. Triggered by a salt shortage in the South, John Marsh Avery improved existing salt works, leading to the discovery of solid salt 16 feet underground in 1862. Despite Union troops destroying the mine in April of 1863, mining operations persisted. In 1866, a company bored 65 feet down without reaching the salt bed's bottom hitting at a colossal depth comparable to Mount Everest. The mining process used to involve a platform suspended by a rope extending into a vast chamber producing six tons of salt daily. Over the years, various companies leased the mine until Cargill assumed control in 1997 until its permanent closure in 2022, marking the end of a fascinating historical and industrial era. Discover Stop 7, the vibrant bottling line. 
Step into this flavorful journey where precision meets scale, bringing the iconic taste of Tabasco to tables worldwide. Each weekday, an impressive 720,000 two-ounce bottles are meticulously filled here. Tabasco has many different sizes to choose from, from the two-ounce and five-ounce bottles to the substantial one U.S. gallon jug tailored for food service businesses and the charming one-eighth U.S. fluid ounce miniature bottles. The McAhenney Company achieved an exclusive honor, securing a royal warrant of appointment, making it one of the select U.S. companies designated as a supplier to none other than Queen Elizabeth herself. This coveted distinction places McAhenney among a prestigious league of 850 companies worldwide acknowledged by such warrants with the specific recognition as supplier of Tabasco to Her Majesty the Queen, Master of the Household, granted in 2009. Now let's embark on Stop 8, Tabasco Today and delve into the spicy revolution that has ignited kitchens and culinary communities worldwide. Tabasco brand pepper sauce transcends borders, tantalizing taste buds in over 195 countries and territories. Its packaging adorned with translations in 36 different languages and dialects. The iconic Tabasco bottle, maintaining its timeless cologne-style design from the inaugural 1868 batch, has become a global culinary symbol. Remarkably, 1 8 ounce size Tabasco bottles featuring the presidential seal find a prestigious place on Air Force One. The influence extends to our military, with Tabasco sauce becoming a staple in the United States military mills since the 1980s. Similarly, our brave allies in the Australian, British, and Canadian armies include the fiery condiment in their ration. Tabasco transcends cultures, bringing a zing to mills around the world, from everyday kitchens to the highest echelons of global culinary experiences. Now it's time to go shopping at the Tabasco Country Store, a vibrant blend of online allure and brick and mortar charm. Serving as a meet and greet for one of the world's most iconic brands, the store invites you to explore exclusive Tabasco pepper sauces, unique gear, and collectibles found nowhere else. A must visit whether or not you've taken the tour the country store boasts an array of bold merch catering to everyone, from the grill master to the discerning foodie and the ultimate Tabasco sauce enthusiast. The Tabasco Country Store aims to bridge that connection between fans and their sauce, offering not just bottles of classic red, but also soft pepper pajamas and striking kitchenware. Wander through shelves stocked with iconic products cooking supplies, exclusive apparel, tailgating gear, and so much more, creating a brand experience that resonates uniquely and is sure to leave a lasting impression on any hot sauce enthusiast. Welcome to the Cajun culinary haven that is known as Restaurant 1868, owned and operated by the Tabasco Company themselves. This restaurant is at the very heart of Tabasco's operations. Celebrating local Cajun and Creole cuisine with a dash of the iconic Tabasco hot sauce. Aptly named after the year of Tabasco's founding, 1868 offers a menu that perfectly complements the spicy essence of its signature product. Indulge in delectable dishes like crawfish etouffee, boudin, and jambalaya, all generously adorned with Tabasco sauce. The restaurant's competent staff, known for their hard work and positivity, contribute to the wonderful dining experience. Immerse yourself in the pleasant ambiance of 1868, a rustic yet 
elegant establishment, unafraid to spice things up. Whether you seek nice service, tasty meals at a fair price, or a culinary journey blending comfort with elegance, Restaurant 1868 beckons you with open arms. Just like the Tabasco Country Store, you can visit Restaurant 1868 whether or not you go on the Avery Island fan experience but it's the last official stop on the factory tour. Buckle up, Buttercup, because now we're going out on the driving tour at Jungle Gardens. Our story begins with Edward Avery McAhenney, renowned Arctic explorer and conservationist, who left an indelible legacy through his commitment to preserving nature. His impact is most evident in the establishment of a private wildlife refuge on his family estate on Avery Island. McAhenney played a pivotal role in the conservation of a vast coastal marshland in Louisiana, transforming it into a sanctuary for birds. Not only did he contribute to the protection of native species, he also enriched jungle gardens with exotic plants. This 170-acre botanical haven on Avery Island now stands as a testament to McAhenney's dedication to biodiversity, serving as both a picturesque landscape and a vital bird sanctuary. While the Tabasco Factory Tour immerses visitors in a walking exploration, the Jungle Tour offers a captivating driving experience with 14 designated stops. During our journey, we will delve into the narration behind four of these stops, each unveiling a unique facet of the expansive jungle gardens. However, we extend an invitation to you to savor all 14 stops at your leisure when you embark on this enchanting visit. The driving tour promises a dynamic and comprehensive exploration of the natural wonders that grace Avery Island's jungle gardens. Before embarking on your jungle garden adventure, make sure to pause at the welcoming gift shop for a quick check-in. This quaint shop is not just a checkpoint, it's a treasure trove of Tabasco products, featuring island-produced honey and other delights. Essential amenities like water and restrooms await, ensuring you're well-equipped for your exploration. Given the marshy surroundings, particularly in warmer seasons, it's wise to anticipate encounters with mosquitoes. Arm yourself against these tiny winged companions by taking advantage of the opportunity to apply mosquito repellent before continuing your journey through the lush wonders of jungle gardens. Our initial stop on the garden tour is at the fascinating alligator lagoons. Here, you'll encounter three small ponds teeming with alligators, although spotting just one or two is common. Yet be ever vigilant in alligator country, as it's not the ones you see that pose the danger. Edward Avery McAhenney was a true expert in alligator biology, having penned the alligator's life history in 1935, a testament to his extensive knowledge of the species. Many of the alligators in these lagoons were born here, while others were originated from gator farms. McAhenney's connection to these reptiles goes beyond conservation. He holds the record for shooting the longest American alligator at an astonishing 19 feet 2 inches in 1890. This remarkable feat, conducted during a duck hunting adventure, showcases McAhenney's profound understanding and contribution to the study of these formidable creatures. His pioneering work remains instrumental in sharing our comprehension of alligators, from their reproductive patterns to their remarkable sizes, exemplified by that colossal 19-foot behemoth he encountered. As we explore the alligator lagoons, let's remember the rich legacy left by McAhenney and the captivating world of alligators he so passionately documented and studied. Our journey through Jungle Gardens leads us to stop four, the historic boathouse, a tangible reminder of Edward Avery McAhenney's visionary collaboration with Charles Willis Ward, 
McElhenney, ever the conservationist, constructed this boathouse for Ward, a close friend and an adventurous soul who traversed the coastal United States in a grand 70-foot motorboat named Ethel M. Ward. Ward, a prominent grower of carnations and a key figure in establishing the American Carnation Society, also explored the Everglades for the Smithsonian Institution around the turn of the century. In a significant partnership with McElhenney, Ward contributed to the acquisition of 54,000 acres of Louisiana coastal marshland in 1910, aiming to establish a wildlife refuge. The duo generously donated 13,000 acres to the state of Louisiana a year later in 1911, leading to the creation of the Ward McElhenney Refuge, now known as the State Wildlife Refuge. This boathouse serves as a testament to their shared vision for conservation and natural habitats. Ward's motorboat, temporarily renamed the USS Rickwood, during his service to the United States Navy during the First World War from 1917 to 1919, further adds a fascinating layer to the history encapsulated by this stop. As we explore this boathouse, Let's appreciate the enduring legacy of McAhenney and Ward in shaping the landscape of Louisiana's coastal marshland. Our exploration takes us to the captivating Stop 8, the iconic Buddha, a cherished gift bestowed upon Edward Avery McAhenney in 1936 by two friends from New York. Located within a glass temple, this Chinese Buddha dating back to around 1100 AD is a testament to the rich cultural exchanges that McElhenney fostered. The serene statue finds its home in an Asian-inspired garden carefully crafted on one of the seven hills of knowledge. This meticulously designed setting features a tranquil pond, an arched bridge, and a glass-enclosed shrine, creating a harmonious atmosphere for this ancient artifact. The visionary architect behind this remarkable Buddha shrine structure is none other than Owen J.T. Southwell. As we encounter Stop 8, let's immerse ourselves in the fusion of cultures and the artistic brilliance that defines this unique corner of Jungle Gardens, showcasing McAhenney's penchant for blending nature with cultural treasures. Our final destination, Stop 11, leads us to the remarkable Bird City, a testament to Edward Avery McAhenney's dedication to wildlife conservation. In the late 19th century, the snowy egret population faced a perilous decline due to plume hunters seeking the delicate feathers for fashionable ladies' hat adornments. Disturbed by this alarming trend, McAhenney took proactive measures locating surviving egrets along the Gulf Coast. Bringing them to his Avery Island estate, he introduced them to a specially designed aviary he called a flying cave. Come fall, McAhenney released the birds to migrate south, and to his delight, they returned in the spring, accompanied by even more snowy egrets. By 1911, Bird City served as a summer nesting ground for an estimated 100,000 egrets, earning praise from Theodore Roosevelt, the father of American conservationism, who held it as the most noteworthy reserve in the country. Today, the sanctuary continues to welcome the return of snowy egrets each spring, perpetuating McAhenney's legacy in preserving avian habitats. It's worth noting that McAhenney's extensive research here contributed to his influential books, Bird City in 1934 and The Autobiography of an Egret in 1940, further solidifying his impact on avian conservation and ornithological knowledge. As we conclude our scenic driving tour of enchanting jungle gardens, it prompts reflection on the remarkable life and enduring legacy of Edward Avery McAhenney. Despite his passing in 1949, just three years after a debilitating stroke, McAhenney's impact resonates on Avery Island. 
The gardens and bird city remain sanctuaries for diverse bird and plant species, drawing tourists to their captivating beauty. Makahemi's commitment to conservation extended beyond Avery Island. With nearly 175,000 acres of coastal marshland preserved as a wildfire refuge, his extensive documentation of Avery Island's flora and fauna, now housed at Louisiana State University, is a testament to his passion. The E.A. McAhenney Collection stands as a tribute, honoring his contributions to natural history and ensuring his legacy endures. On this episode of Gulf Coastal Connections, we have embarked on an extraordinary journey as we have unraveled the enchanting tale of Tabasco. From the Tabasco factory tour, revealing hot sauce secrets, to navigating Edward Avery McAhenney's jungle gardens, we have witnessed the blending of spice, history, and conservation that defines the essence of Tabasco and Avery Island itself. I would like to personally thank you for joining us on this adventure, and we'd be delighted if you decided to join our community. Consider becoming a part of our journey by subscribing, giving us a thumbs up to share some love, and spreading the joy with your friends. Until our trails cross again, take care, stay safe, and we will see you again on the next episode of Gulf Coastal Connection. Dwight Eisenhower, the 34th President of the United States, was not only a distinguished leader, but also an ardent grill master. His passion for grilling was so intense that he had a dedicated setup in the sunroom atop the White House, turning the presidential residency into a surprising source of barbecue aromas in the 1950s. Passers-by on Pennsylvania Avenue were often greeted with the sight of smoke billowing from the White House, a telltale sign of Eisenhower at his grill. Eisenhower's grilling was characterized by his unique method of preparing strip steak. A Texas native, he savored the ritual of grilling salted, garlic rubbed steaks directly on hot coals, achieving a crispy charred crust that became emblematic of his technique. This approach, now known as the Eisenhower method, was a testament to his culinary talent. Eisenhower fondly called these creations outdoor steaks, a dish he frequently served to guests. Now you may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with Tabasco sauce? Well, I'll tell you. Shane Bernard's excellent book, Tabasco, an Illustrated History, has President Eisenhower's barbecue sauce recipe in it, and it does contain Tabasco sauce. Bernard helpfully points out that since this sauce has a little sugar in it, it's best used as a finishing sauce. Here, I'll use it as a tasty steak sauce. This is what you'll need. One quarter cup butter melted. 128 ounce can of stewed tomatoes, strained and pureed. A fourth of a cup vinegar, a tablespoon sugar, three teaspoons paprika, one small onion, finely chopped. Teaspoon salt, one teaspoon black pepper, two teaspoons chili powder, one and a half teaspoons Worcestershire salt, and the piece de resistance one quarter tablespoon Tabasco sauce, or according to taste. Mix these ingredients together, bring to a boil, reduce to low, and simmer for 30 minutes. Let cool for around 20 minutes, then pour into a glass container and put it in the refrigerator for at least four hours. So here's to President Eisenhower, Tabasco, barbecue and outdoors, good steaks, and Excellent writing. Bon appetit, y'all.